All right, here we go. Overdrive, off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker up on TSN 4. Brian Hayes, Zio Doug, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. How are we feeling? Tuesday afternoon, we got a Leaf game tonight. we got a lot of things going on in the sports world. Norris votes, you and I going yes. at it, right? The whole world's waiting for our five-pack. Can't wait for that later this afternoon. I'm actually Well, I did what you did yesterday. I had an hour conference call with Noodles at 9 (laughs) a.m. You do whatever you got to do, man. As long as you can sleep at night, I'm cool with that. But let me ask you this, and you don't have to rat people out, the rats that they are. Yeah. Did you get any notes from people we work with, like senior type people saying, you deserved like your list was better. I don't like, don't tell oh, any type of not message. one message from anybody. Really? Cause I got a bunch. <laughs> I did and that's why one. I brought it up from senior type people that said, I don't know what noodles was thinking because yours was a, like a, like a senior executive analyst type list. Right. Of course. So senior type people, <laughs> yeah. Senior type people thought it was a senior type list. I, I love I my list and I thought it was list good. Is good, but I think you Googie got- sent me messages that said, I, I don't know, I liked your Is list. Is that right? Because JP did send me a message and saying great list. So it's interesting. There's a battle <laughs> yeah, behind the glass a, now, Doogie and JP. Maybe Al's brother on a cruise can be the... Yeah. Although, did you see there was like a cruise on fire? I don't know if you saw that. There no, was, I didn't see that. Like one of these these cruise ships, that the tail end catches fire. It gets struck by lightning or whatever. Same one caught on fire again. It was like yesterday. I was. I'm, I'm, I'm don't like, tell his brother like that. That's his lifestyle. Scary man. stuff. He's like, established a cruise lifestyle. That's a lifestyle. Oh. You see, Jim Harbaugh's got a lifestyle in L.A. You see, he's living in an RV in L.A. Permanently. Oh well, I can't Actually, imagine it's going to be permanently. He's like Riggs from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> <laughs> the guy's just setting up Dude, in that a guy's thick got RV. Hundred million in the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He had that Michigan money. Now he's got the Chargers money. He played in the NFL. He's been around forever. R- RV life. RV lifestyle. Riggs from Lethal Weapon. Riggs so, was living a great life, man. He, well, he lived in a trailer at the water. Right at the water, though. Yeah. That's like prime real estate in L.A. Riggs. Yeah, but now the, that's just basically it's a <laughs> squatter. A he's a squatter. Like, that yeah, guy he was, was a squatter. That's what he was. He was a beach squatter. That was Mel Gibson, right? Yes. That was Mel Gibson. You remember Riggs. when, yeah. There Murdaugh like, was there. Uh, knock Murtaugh. his shoulder out all the time. Yeah. and Yeah, because remember he started dating the blonde woman that was with the, uh, was it Germans he was the going Swedes, against? Or the Swedes, Swedes yeah. maybe. Yeah. Yeah, and then they storm in with the helicopters to his RV. I'm and telling you. He had the dog cooking. Riggs yeah, the, was living a lifestyle, he escaped, man. He escaped. He had an escape door underneath. Underneath the RV <laughs> on the beach. And dug- <laughs> yeah, so that's uh, that's what Harbaugh is doing. Harbaugh is living that lifestyle in L.A. So what did he just say? I got to find a place to live so in the meantime I'm RVing. And yeah, so- I mean, what I, I read and what I saw of it today, I guess he said you know, he always wanted to live in an RV or always wanted to check that out. I don't know how serious all, but you, you, it is. You do that for two. You pay someone to drive you around for two weeks. That's RVing. I don't think anybody wants to explore the permanent RV lifestyle. No, no and he won't permanent. be. Like I, at some point, it's going to have to change. He's going to have a house in the LA area. It, it's so sure funny. We were talking about RVs the other day in Ottawa with the production crew because I went on. I think you guys know this. About six years ago, I went on an RV trip with Struddy. And a few other yeah, family, like Jason in Montana Hall. or something. We went like to Montana, that. but I didn't know anything about an RV. So who we, drove it? I drove it, a thirty-two foot RV. I don't think uh, they should be. Qual- I don't keys. think you're qualified. I to don't do either. That. I would say if I walked in and you guys didn't hire somebody, I would say sorry, I'm not no. doing this. I'm not yeah. going down I, this way. You can like RV World in Alberta. We flew to Calgary, just outside of Calgary in Airdrie, Alberta. We drove out there, took a car out there. And they threw me the keys to this 32-foot Winnebago. It was like an unbelievable like setup. And it was me, Steph, and, and Dylan was younger. We didn't, hadn't had Quinn yet. And we put a, the car seat at the kitchen table, like strapped her in. And I drove six hours south on a two-lane highway with a giant RV. The, the wheel was That's the impressive. size of this table that's impressive but i i would not be comfortable driving that type of machinery i mean that, that's what scares me is i was uncomfortable yeah and and we drove across the street to the walmart parking lot oh those are so out i just of the practiced States. like i was practicing in the parking lot yeah. turning and stuff 
Because I'm like, my family's in here. I got to drive down the highway. You go to the states, like a Walmart parking lot. There, there will be 15, 20 RVs well, down there. You're, apparently, you're allowed to like stay overnight. Yeah, that's what it is. Go into the Walmart, use the facilities, the, the, and then go shut the, the mill in the RV. <laughs> the funniest thing about it, though, is I rented this massive thing, and it was just three of us. Strudwick has a big family. There's five of them. He was in like the shortest. It was like the Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> and he paid the same amount of what I paid. And he rolled into this thing, and they were jammed in there like sardines. Yeah. And I rolled in there. It was one of those things where you stop, and then it would expand. Like, my living room expanded. I had, like, things that opened up. The only problem is I didn't realize you hook up the water in that. And about day three, like, the water started backing up. I was taking like 20 minute showers. I didn't realize you're not supposed to shower that long. City lifestyle, <laughs> man. You can't do that. That's so a city it right there. Yeah, you're, supposed to jump in a, you're supposed to jump in a pond and shampoo your right, head. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're not no, even supposed was, to turn the tap on uh, no, on an RV. I he don't helped think. me drain it. Uh, there were some people there that helped, but they rolled up in these tiny little short ones that were terrible. And mm -hmm. I felt bad because the families of five were like sleeping above the, the, dr the driver's area right. and jammed in and. And you probably didn't even open your doors. I had a, I had a You're like, king you size bed. There. I'm like, I'm not. We're you setting guys. up shop. That's your problem, not me. Yeah, it was fun. There but you I go. Never. I don't know. Say. Oh, well, you and again, you and Harbaugh. Exactly. You Harbaugh Riggs. RV life. Yeah. It was, uh, who else was it? Um, what's his name? Brad Pitt in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Remember, oh, he lived right. in the RV too. <laughs> There's actually a lot of guys that had the RV lifestyle going. I don't know. Should we do an RV tour? Overdrive RV? We used to say that. Remember, we wanted to do that uh, back in the day with the hearse. the hearse. We wanted to get the hearse. Because there used to be a hearse in North Toronto that would just cruise down Young Street. We were, I'd see that, I'd see that hearse all the this time. This is what I think we should do. And it was do. just a guy that had, that had bought the and hearse I for cash. And I think it's a reasonable idea. Yeah. I think before training camp, Remember when Hedge and Dutch would go across Canada for Sports Center? Yeah. It's like that craft before, tour. Yeah, yeah. Before training camp, we start in Vancouver and we get somebody to bring the overdrive RV, me, you, Doogie, Noodles, and JP. We go from Van, Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Montreal, Ottawa, and we land back in Toronto. I love that idea. Seven city tour. We do shows there. Mm -hmm. I just my concern is there's <laughs> there's like, lots of concerns. Well, the etiquette, like yeah, I don't know. Five if of us, six that. of us in an <laughs> RV with one bathroom. That maybe. Would be you don't think we could pull that off, or do you think there'd be ma major problems? I think we would run into some concerns about day two about certain people's behavior in the <laughs> yeah. RV. Maybe yeah, there would be some. <laughs> Dust ups, I think. On maybe we need multiple RVs. I, maybe we'll two see. because there's, I don't know. Can you imagine like. But anyway, Canada, overdrive everyone, tour. Yeah. Yeah. Boston it. pizzas across Canada, Vancouver, They're everywhere. Edmonton, Calgary. They're everywhere. I would do it. That's a great. That idea. would be awesome. Drive awesome. into a Boston pizza and fire up the show. Yeah, I like that idea. BP tour. Yeah, a lot of potential there. Lots. I like the fact there. that you start in Vancouver and go right through the, the mountains and into Calgary, up oh, to yeah. Edmonton, Beautiful. over to Winnipeg. We'll let all the teams know we're coming in. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> coming that in. Might, hot. Theirs might be the biggest problem. Oh, Brian Hayes is coming to town. Right, that's it, exactly. Can we get Quinn Hughes? Uh, remember these comments here? Uh, what about that? Is Vancouver mad at you? I don't Probably. Think so. Probably for past comments, not this. Probably at some point. Oh, I've yeah, been he very said a supportive. Couple weeks ago, he doesn't take them seriously. They I did not say that. <laughs> I did not say I don't take them seriously. I, I said of the four Canadian teams going to the playoffs, if there's one I'd pick that I think is going to have the biggest challenge come playoff time, I'd probably pick Vancouver. Um, There's no sample size there, right? And that's the reason for it. Like they just they're not they're not battle tested in the playoffs yet. I've been, I've been how can you not be thoroughly impressed with the way they played all year? Like one got away from them last night. They got down early, but they did battle back. They had a chance to get back in that game. Yeah. And LA, you know, LA's starting to put it together too since that coaching change. Coaching changes have worked, man. Yeah. Like we we discuss Dude, it all the no time kidding. in the NHL. Like, wow, why do they keep turning over so many guys? Because there's evidence that it works really well. Right. You know, it doesn't always work, but if you put someone in there that you have faith in, that you believe can push different buttons or at least spark some sort of a different attitude and a different approach, there's a number of teams that have got back into the race. There's also yeah. desperation involved. I'm sure management is thinking, if we don't make a change here, we're screwed. LA had to. Like, yeah. they, they were spiraling out of control. 
Yeah. They were a disaster. Yes. Like as bad as Edmonton's first 15 games were, LA, got LA close. had a, a 15 to 18 game stretch that was just as bad. It, it like was, it was horrendous. They how had awful such they were. a great start, but then they had such a yeah. Like it was here and then here. It was mandatory. They had to they do had it to, to save their their yeah. season. Unfortunately, yeah, and they are a good team. I think they will be a problem for whoever they play. But if they put it together, because they do have depth, they've got. You know, Drew Doughty is a real interesting cat for me because this having guy a great is year. having a great season. Kopitar scored last night. Like mm-hmm. they, you know, they haven't taken their foot off the gas and they got some good young players there. But as we've talked about, you throw them in a boat with Edmonton, uh, Colorado, Dallas, like there's Winnipeg, like there's a... a when did we of- start shaving out the teams that are officially eliminated? I like it. I like that a lot. It is. It's, it's well, it salt. Kinda- it's salt, and I like it. You yeah. don't exist anymore. You're yeah. just blocked You don't out. even put a little E beside their name. You just fade them. That's outstanding. Joe I hope from the Bridge, you're the first star today. Thank it you is for doing it. It's, it's great, like a- though. Joe from the Bridge, first star. Like, you're just complete. You're a completely irrelevant. You don't get a rose. You don't get a rose. You don't get anything. <laughs> no. Put up the eastern side and see what if there's a, any non roses. Is anyone even eliminated it? Well, yeah. I mean, Columbus has got to be eliminated. Ottawa they not? would be close. That's no. the oh, yeah, only, Columbus. 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 only Columbus. Only Columbus has got get a rose. The black plague of Joe from the bridge. Joe wow. from the bridge is black plague. Is when you just you slowly fade. And every day, it should fade even more. It is so ignorant, though. Like, it's like they're not in the league. It's, yeah. You're eliminated from right. existence. It's like you're relegated. You're relegated from the standings. We're not even <laughs> going to include you anymore. You're completely Well, taken that out. would be the most obnoxious thing is just not have Just erase one. them. Like you, you, A team formerly you known them. as. At least you can see them there. They're just yeah. kind of you know, shaded out. If you just didn't have them. That I li- would be obnoxious. I, that is obnoxious. I kind of support that. The <laughs> I, problem is the Canadian teams are coming. Like Montreal and Ottawa are going to get there soon. It's one yeah. thing for us to say, yeah, get Anaheim up there and Columbus. Yeah. You know, once you get Ottawa and Montreal up there, it's yeah. it, and that's coming. It's just a matter of time. And what's wild is you look at the East and, you know, you, you look at, I'm just looking at the Metro right here. Like Pittsburgh is close. Yeah. They're not <laughs> far off either. Like, they're way up on Columbus, clearly. But in the Metro, they are now the seventh-place team. Yeah. And there's a gap between them and New Jersey and the Islanders and obviously the Capitals. And, like, after that trade deadline when they sold, and they had to, and I think Dubas kind of called a shot. They knew this was coming. Like, they, they are really fading to the point where it's almost like tanking, but you still have Crosby and company. And I don't see how they turn this around. I know we've had this conversation many times before, but I'm really curious to see what Sid's going to say or do publicly this summer. Because as of July 1st, he can sign an extension. And I wouldn't put it past him to do that. Like, almost immediately. Get it over with. Quiet everyone down. Here's my answer. Don't ask me again. I know, but why? Like, I, I don't want to start Sidney Crosby's. No, gonna get a, I, I know but that. It but just, it just, it would blow my mind to think that a player as competitive as him and that wants to win as much as him wants to sign an extension to rebuild i just don't see that the one thing the organization owes him is to do what he wants like if he wants to stay well they don't have a choice but they did that with milk they kept milk and they kept letang and look how it's worked out you're you're right but Sidney crosby calls the shot there that's my point is he deserves that respect so it goes. To, they go to him. Kyle goes to him, or management, or above ownership goes to him and said, "What do you want to do?" He he controls the situation. It's not Kyle going. I want to head in this direction, and you gotta you, you gotta do this. It's Sydney controls the situation. He's been the face of the organization. He saved that organization from bankruptcy, really, and delivered cups. He's been an unbelievable ambassador. He deserves to write his ticket there and go, mm-hmm. this is what I'd like. So getting back, he might say, you know what? I'm, I would like to move on. I don't know if he will. I, I believe he's a guy. Doesn't that wants seem to, likely. Doesn't but... seem like it, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. But he mm-hmm. deserves the respect to go, I want to do this. And if he wants to stay, then, the, then Kyle's got to go, well, keep in mind, there might be some pain here. July 1st, you could have an exclusive sit down, full true serum. What's your future? Marner... Dry Settle Crosby, who would you sit down with? Sidney Crosby. They can all sign an extension on July 1. 
Sidney Crosby, because it's like there's just so much at stake there. Well, and his age, too. Sid's won, and he's been a lifer there. The other two are trying to win in their in their first organizations as well. Mm-hmm. And they're younger. You know, what's Dreisaitl, 28, and Marner's 26, around the same 25, thing, yeah. 26. You know, so it's... I look at them differently because they haven't... They've had individual success, not the team success. Sid's done everything. Sid could retire tomorrow, and he's arguably top five history of the game. Yeah. You wonder what the guy that he drinks beer with on the dock at the cottage says, too, because apparently when I was out at the World Juniors, everyone was like, ah, oh, 10 miles away, Crosby and McKinnon got cottages beside each other. They probably hang out a little bit. Oh, it would yeah. be interesting to see, because he did it with Drew Ann, and Crosby is a completely different animal, but it would be fascinating what the conversation would be. Yeah, Marchand's part of that, too. It's the three-pack. Apparently, they have famous workouts in Halifax. Yeah. Like I love in, I, I loved McKinnon's comments the other day. I don't know if we, we didn't chat about it, but him saying, like, I called Drew Ann saying, I want you here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know if you saw and they were, that. Yeah. Moose said He was like, there was some stress involved that he hoped he performed. Yeah, I want this guy to perform because he took some less money. He goes, he's my guy walking in the door. And Drew Ann, you know, by all accounts, not all, by all accounts, he's had a really good, a good season. That a good year. Yeah, he and really He's has. had a resurgence. And you know what is good for him? It, it He's not front and center. He's in Colorado, a team that has winning pedigree. He's far down the list of of you know superstars in Montreal. There's a local kid, mm-hmm. you know who you traded for, all of that type of stuff. You know, to me, it's the perfect scenario for him. And I think he scored it was 17th the other day. Yeah, and he's Game playing one. top six power minutes play, like every night. Power yeah. play. Yeah, no, he's good for him. That that has worked out really, really well for for Drew and McKinnon and and everyone else involved, but. Yeah, I think the answer, it's probably Sid, because I'd love to just get every possible answer on how he feels about everything. Because the team's in a different spot, too. It's not only his career and who he is and where he's at. Pittsburgh's in a different spot. Edmonton and the Leafs are a really good team. Right. You know, and we'll see what's going to happen. My my answer could change depending on what happened in the playoffs. Let me qualify that. that. Edmonton and or the Leafs go on a long run or go out in the first round. That could be very, very different. And there's also a different context between... You know, once you get deeper into who these guys are and where they're from, Marner is quite literally from Toronto. Leon Dreisettle's from Germany. Right. Got no connection to Edmonton other than the fact that he was drafted there. Obviously, has grown up there, loves it there, plays really well there. He and Connor are best friends, all that kind of stuff. But there are different elements involved in all three. Yep. And there's no guarantees any of them sign early in the summer or before camp. Maybe all three of them are like, I'm just going to play this out. Look at the news that came out of Dallas today that. I guess Jerry Jones down in Orlando, I think it is, where the co- all these NFL meetings have been going on. And uh, he basically announced, like, Dak's not getting an extension. We're not reworking anything. He's got one year left on his deal. We're going to play it out. Thank God. But that is going to be a circus. Yeah. And maybe he wants it that way. And it very well could be the right play. Force him to prove he should stick around. They're going to do the same thing with McCarthy, and you can get out of it if it doesn't work. Dude, the only way that I would keep him is if he won the Super Bowl. That's it. If he doesn't, with those playoff flops and his inconsistency in big moments, incredible regular seasons, mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's like he's garbage come playoff time. I'd give him one more crack, and if it's not Super Bowl, we're not signing you. Well, you got you to gotta, at least he's come out and said it. So now the, the problem is is, it's going to get noisy all season long. And if he does have an amazing regular season, which he, he's had. He's had you know great the regular season. these days, they can control the message. If he has, like, workouts, he can just say, I'm not addressing the contract, so don't even ask me this year. Then it's over with. Everyone talks about the noise. If you eliminate the noise, it's gone day one. You just say, I'll, what do you want me to talk about? I didn't get extended. It was disappointing. And now I'm not addressing it again. And that's all you have to do. And you do, you don't have to answer. Well, it. you can control what you're willing to talk about. You can't control what everyone else is going to well, talk about. Well, if Jerry about, Jones though. was smart, which some would is have. Is he? That's no, I know. Like, he, he's presser, likely to get on a radio show four times a week and talk about the status of the contracts exactly. and how much he didn't want to do it or whatever. Yeah. But he's instead he could say, that's yeah. what it is. And it's not being discussed. Yeah. Dak can control that. Dak can say, I'm, I'm, yeah. listen, I'm here. I'm a cowboy. I want to be a cowboy. I'm sure he'll be, you know, ready to, for all that, prepared and right. say the right things. And I would guess, based on his history, if he's healthy in the regular season, he's going to perform really well. And the Cowboys are going to be a really good team. Right. But you can't control what Jones is going to say. You can't control how the media and the fan base is going to react. 
And it's the Cowboys. It's and gonna it's going to be incredibly loud. Because yep. for him and McCarthy, McCarthy was on death's door down there too. Yeah. And they brought him back. So you have the head coach and the starting quarterback of the most popular team in American sports who are on the edge. That it, with an owner who is completely yeah. irrational it, and, comp- that is and a complete be, gong show in terms of how he handles the media and the press and the whole organization. That is going to be the noisiest of noisy as As lines. loud as it gets. Like loud as it gets. He has a great Dak game. And and like all oh, this guy's writing a check somewhere else. He's going somewhere else. Like yep. it will be, it'll be question Bad after long. question. You're right. He can say, I don't want to do anything, but Jerry Jones is going to have to answer for it. Why won't you sign him? Why aren't you going to sign him? And if he has a great regular season, you know, everyone's going to be talking about the type of contract that he's going to garner, but maybe it's not with Dallas. Maybe, it be, maybe he walks, right? Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe he has a great year and then goes, actually, I'm out of here. I'm going to go somewhere else uh, with Mark yeah. McCarthy, right? Ooh, maybe it's a, a Willie Beeman type thing. Any given Sunday <laughs> at the end, Al Pacino. I got all these movie references. You are today. I don't I'm know. on fire with the movie references, but none of them are modern movies. Yeah. Like I, I would Doogie guess would... Doogie has no idea what Lethal Weapon is no. any given Sunday. Uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, he should know. That's only That's a few some, years somewhat old. Somewhat recent, but there, there. You mentioned the RV. People are sending us pictures of cousin Eddie from vacation. Right, Christmas guy? vacation. Christmas vacation. Yeah. Yeah, cousin Eddie was that. That was <laughs> that was He's uncalled for. The, his rain in the crapper with he, the. Uh, the mock turtleneck on. Yeah. Thinking, thinking ahead to the tour we're going to do, let's just take airplanes and hotels. No, no, I want an RV. I think it'd be awesome. Maybe, we, yeah, we, I don't know how this is going to work. The content alone. <laughs> I don't know how it's really going to work. The content might be good, but like, I don't know, well, man. Well, I go to bed at nine o'clock. I need, I can't have noise. I'll, I'll freak out. Yeah. Didn't I'm you with guys you, man. Drive from Ottawa back together once. That was for Math. That was the opening game, I think, yeah. wasn't it? That was like Matthew's debut, Marner's Four debut. Four hours straight, no word spoken. <laughs> there was a stop was at perfect. a gas station. Oh yeah, things. <laughs> yeah. That was the, the Joker leaving the hospital. <laughs> I was just like literally yellow tape coming out. <laughs> there were some things. I, you're right. <laughs> just so outside of Belleville. Yeah, I but don't. yeah, we hit that. We did what we had to do. We, that was a catch and release scenario. Did we stay the night? I guess we did. I think we drove day of game, did show their game, yeah, and then came back the next day and did the show back home. I can't but, remember um, what we did, but because that would have been eight eight years ago, I guess. Yeah, because we're into their eighth season. All right, Duffy's coming up. He'll be in studio. The game's on TSN four tonight. Leafs Devils. So we'll tee that up. Confirm it tonight. Coming up later in the afternoon. Overdrive continues. TSN ten fifty and on TSN four. Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line to the final score. Leafs Devils tonight. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, and there's James Duffy around the table. JD. How are you? Were you golfing last week in a snowstorm? It hailed for a couple of holes. <laughs> That's just not necessary as much as I like golf. It was What's a- going on with the mics here? Hold on a minute. Does that sound right to you, JP? Check, 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 check. Yeah, we're just adjusting because your mic sounds a little bit off. Give me a test. Test one, two, three. Sounds Thank good you to very me. much. All right, we're good. Go ahead, JD. Explain yourself golfing. Way to be behind the, like, on the down low there. <laughs> it's kind of amateur hour show up. Yeah. Professional <laughs> here. Professional. Uh, no, it was, I've golfed four. I've played four rounds. Four rounds in 2024? <laughs> in Ontario. In March. You're kidding me. No. Where are you <laughs> Where doing How is this? that possible? It's that Drager's goat track, isn't no, it? No, it's at this place in, I mean, I don't look like, give free plugs nationally should i uh, go ahead you know, whatever you know, it's, it's we're, called we're... uh dragon's den 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 no, no. that's the TV Drag- show. <laughs> dragon's lair dragon's fire there you go all right yeah and, i don't uh, know i have one played of those there. ones that you need to go out towards guelph on the 401 and you just go south nice track okay opens there march 4th i played my first round is that right Oh, Carlo and AK was in that one. Okay, I remember seeing them post. And I, I have a die, I have that. a couple of diehards. My buddy Brad just books as soon as they're open. He just is that books right? Time and See, I'm not even in the. I'm not even there outside. But what is this Brad guy do? Good does Friday. He sit by his computer and say, are they opening? No, are they opening? Just, like that's just insane. Loves the game. You need a guy like that in your life. Yes, oh, you do. Yeah. Especially me, who I'm not good at booking tea time. You really do. Like that. Where, it, are you, where are you going on your RV? Where, where I missed. I just well, caught the end of that. Yeah, we're working on this. Like already. a tour. All seven. 
Canadian NHL cities city. before training camp. We're going to do a cross Canada where you tour. do like a live li overdrive live. Yeah, that'd be overdrive fun. live from each Boston pizza in each location. You know what you should get if you can't get the RV. Uh, when Pittsburgh played Detroit in the cup, they played back to back cup finals, right? Yes. When Pittsburgh won. So I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one, but we, uh, instead of flying, they got us Motley Cruise tour bus. Nice. And uh, we went back and forth from Pittsburgh to Detroit in Motley wow. Cruise tour bus. <laughs> what kind of DNAs on that tour bus? <laughs> oh, the stuff that had gone on, <laughs> no matter how rowdy we got, it was 10 times Nothing. tamer than anything that had ever gone on in there. Oh. But I'd yeah. love to shine the CSI light in there. Good <laughs> oh, God. Imagine that bus. The horrendous story, though, I don't even want to tell this on radio, but it was in Pittsburgh for like three days before it went back to Detroit. And the driver, I guess, was a young rookie driver, didn't move it around. And the sewage that accumulates, and then it does, when it doesn't move around, and then suddenly the bus moves again, it all came up through the bus. Oh, oh my. That's check, please. No. <laughs> and so people were literally nauseous on this interstate. And the guy pulled over. And I think this is probably highly illegal and environmentally uns and just opened the just thing drained and it. drained it at that's the side of the highway. Crazy man. Dude, that's, that's jail time. Scary stuff. <laughs> so, that's like, rock star moose just rolling into the yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, the rock and roll bus would be good. But the RV right. the R V would be good. We need we need a nice like Canadian band, like an eighties like Gowan's tour bus or something. My buddy Pete from McAlpine Ford. Just minutes north, <laughs> miss minutes north of the 407 on Young Street in Aurora. Any other plug? Come, come, see, come see Peter and Steve. I didn't mean to work. That wasn't supposed to be a that plug. Was, that he was just very, bought an RV. Very smooth. He bought an RV. He drives down to Florida and back. That's okay. what maybe you want, want to think of. You don't love flying. Oh, I, 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 I was saying like, on a bird now. Like an 80s band like Glass Tiger or yes. Harlequin or something oh, like yeah. that. But there I want the paint. Triumph. It's got to still have the... We got we to gotta, like Haywire. resurrect one. It's got to have the paint job <laughs> yeah. on Haywire. it. Haywire. 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 got to have wings yeah. Sorry. on it. Sorry. Yeah, no, totally. Dude, Noodles and I were having our own discussion. I noticed that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this, There's a lot going on in here. Um, all right, so what do we got here? Leafs, Leafs, Devils Leafs tonight. tonight. Where do the Devils rank for you for most disappointing team in the league this year? I... <sighs> I think Ottawa's the most disappointing the team in the league if you just go by pure point totals. Mm -hmm. I think the Devils with expectations would be number one because I think there were some people sneaky pick to go to the cup final. So I guess I'd put them up there because I didn't think Ottawa was necessarily going to be a contender, but I didn't think they were going to be dead last or second mm -hmm. last. And then Pittsburgh would be in there, although I think Pittsburgh is more of a disappointment to themselves because I don't think a lot of us believe Pittsburgh was going to be great. I just think Kyle Dubas believed Pittsburgh was going to be great. What's so. your gut telling you what, what Sid does? Because we were just talking about I that. heard you. I, I did this dash to Teriyaki. I finished, we did a little segment there, I had a little chat with Mike Lane, I had a 15 minute window, dash to teriyaki, so that's where I caught the two minutes of you guys talking about the RV. I would have said, you know, in your, what is your Jerry's hypotheticals or Jerry's yeah. percentages? Mm -hmm. uh, I would have said 0% about maybe a year ago. I feel like it's a solid 50-50 he goes because he is the most competitive wow. guy. I think it's underrated sometimes how competitive he is because he's a nice guy on camera, so on and so forth. I can remember one of his agents, I don't care if it was Brisson or one of Brisson's team telling me a story because I was writing about Sid when they were in the cup final years ago, years ago, about how competitive he was. And he told me a story about he came over for dinner and he was playing checkers with the guy's son who was like seven years old. And whatever happened, the kid beat Sid. And Sid took the checkerboard and flung it across the wall. It just in the instant, he lost. And right away, he was like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so, I am so like felt apologetic, turned all red, went and picked up all the checkers. Yeah. But in that instant that he lost that checker game to a kid, he was furious. Wow. And that guy used it just as a story. Is he's like, like McDavid, like all the greats. They don't like to lose in anything. And I think that he has believed in his mind that they were still going to be competitive. Like, I think... Sid believed that they still had a chance. Mm -hmm. And now that these two years are happening, and if, if they move towards a rebuild, I don't think he wants to just have a little three-year see you later in Pittsburgh. Now, if he truly believes Pittsburgh could turn it around again, then he stays. But what I heard you talk about pitch, Nathan man. McKinnon on the dock, man. They could, <laughs> I, I could see him 
I could see him going, which I never thought. And maybe part of it is the reaction to the, the Gensel trade. Remember mm-hmm. that clip? Yeah. Just how down and defeated he yeah. looked. So I never thought it possible. I suppose if you made me bet money, I'd probably lean 51% still that he stays. But I think there's more of a chance than ever um, that maybe he takes a shot and goes somewhere if it's a, a Colorado-type right-fit situation. Right. Just, well, and it's funny how Colorado's history, like, I guess it's only Bork, but, and it's not like Sid's chasing a cup, but I guess you could say Wa too. It's like Wa and Bork, and then remember Solani and Korea went yeah. there, and now people are, like, pushing Crosby there. Like, how much of it is the McKinnon connection? Uh, how tight are they? Like, are they? Oh, I think they're, they're incredibly best tight. They're best Because yeah. yeah, I get people tight. that are writing me, and they always say, those guys are really tight, and they've always said they want to give it one go together. How true that oh, is. I, 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 I think they spend Eastern like, Canadian guys. most of the summers together working yeah. out golf. Every time I go to Cabot, it's like, oh, yeah, Sid and Nate were here last week. Every time. Yeah, they're really, That's a really factor, close. man, because if that guy's in his ear constantly. Well, right. But now Colorado represents this place you go to to chase yeah. cops later in your career, too. And mm-hmm. Well, it's been a cycle because it was, you know, when Bork and Waugh went there, and now, you know, now they are a competitor again. But keep in mind, there's a training facility there, or guys go to train in Colorado in the summer. And like Sid's there, too, Sid I believe, at goes there times. Because I yeah. believe... Um, Andy, his trainer, mm-hmm. is is the guy who runs it. Right. So, I I, I believe because I I've, I've had friends that went, and I was not sure if they tra- still train in Colorado or if they found a different spot. But it was for years, guys off to Colorado train at high mm-hmm. altitude. The whole setup. Andy O'Brien is his name. There you go. Andy. Uh, Let's get him up trainer. here though. Forget Colorado. Like you get Sid to a Canadian. Market. Montreal Canadiens was his favorite team. That's Here's what he the said. Here's interesting question. Do you think it's better for the Penguins if Sid were to leave? And I don't mean, you know, in a sense, he, the most beloved Penguin ever, right there with Mario, obviously. And I'm sure they'd all love him to retire. But if they're just going to trudge along here and delay this rebuild for three, four more years. This guy doesn't want to be miserable for four yeah. years, man. No, I know, but I'm just saying, and it, it might be, if Sid said, hey, I want to go somewhere. That might be the best thing for Dubas to start getting out of the Absolutely. quagmire that he's in right now. It's got to be a trade. Right. He can't say, I'm going to play out and then walk as a free agent. Yeah. yeah. You that get doesn't help. For him, but, uh, no, but if but Sid it, leaves, then you can get rid of, sorry, Malkin and it sort of yeah. opens the door for everything. It turns there. over it turns everything. over everything, yes. Yes. And then Sullivan go, like they literally mm-hmm. just rip the band aid off mm-hmm. and say, the previous era is officially over and we're going to mm-hmm. move in a different direction. Um, which, yeah, that probably makes Dubas' life easier because it gives him an extra two or three years. But also the reality kicks in pretty quickly. Like, you're going to be a mess. I don't know if you're going to sell tickets. Like, that's, right. the na- that's the nature of a lot of markets. You know, it's not like it- Toronto's a different beast. Montreal's a different beast. I'm sure there's some fear in Pittsburgh, and there should be, that you get rid of these guys. Like, Dude, they almost you closed up shop before they got there. That's what I'm saying. Like, if you're losing anyway and you don't have, hey, come out and see Sid one last time, what are you possibly marketing in the future? That was kind because of what I there's not much there under the surface that I'm aware of right now. He deserves to make this decision, and they he deserves the respect in Pittsburgh because of what you just said. He saved that organization. Mm-hmm. So whatever he wants to do, they should respect. They also got the most incredible. I was there doing that lottery coming out of the lockout in New York when it was, remember, it was Pittsburgh and... Anaheim, Anaheim. Brian Burke standing up there for Anaheim, the last two people on the stage, and Ken Sawyer from the Penguins, and it goes the other way, and it goes to Berkey in Anaheim, and who knows what's happened. They they already had a really good team there. But to go from Mario, where Mario played, what, one year with Sid and then retired, or two years with Sid, whatever it was, um, to go from Mario straight to Sid is one of, it's almost the Disgusting. it's the Chicago situation you know a little bit earlier from going from Kane and Taves right to Bedard not knowing if Bedard will ever turn Chicago into a champion but similar franchise luck is remarkable that way yeah yeah some teams have it in pro sports mm-hmm. where you just find a way to you bottom out at the right time and the right guys there and you really got to bottom out and then you got to win a lottery on top of that yeah um which is exactly and what win the lottery there. in the right year yeah exactly right? Yeah, so. exactly. Um, so Leafs Devils tonight on TSN four. You know, we we keep coming back to the Matthews chasing seventy thing, and I'm sure it'll be a part of the broadcast tonight. He needs twelve in twelve games. 
which is totally doable for him. Mm-hmm. Um, yet Marner, who was skating today, and actually, you know, the media got to witness that, and it sounds like he's legitimately day to day, which is a really positive update. He's not going to play tonight. I doubt he plays Thursday. Probably won't even play this week. But by next week, he's probably back. But um, is that still at the kind of the front burner for you going into a game like tonight, or where does no, your I mean, head go it, with the Leafs? Edmondson's out and Riley's out. But I'm I'm a big believer in good time of the year for injuries, particularly the Marner. As long as uh, high ankle sprains are always concerning, but if he gets back with five games to play, then it's perfect that he had three weeks off or whatever before the playoff run. Mm-hmm. Uh, isn't timing of injuries like everything, basically, right? If you get a guy go down three games left of the year and then he's out for half the first round of the first round of the playoffs. So. It's almost like perfect timing for dealing with that. It's like you yeah. got a couple of weeks, then come back, play three or four, and then you're ready to rock. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie because you guys have to spend three hours a day. I find it really hard right now on the lease because there's not much. Besides the Matthews chase and figuring out who's going to be the starting goalie. And I'd like them to, it's hard with the injuries, to settle on deep pairings. Because I remember last year, they were mixing them up like like right down to the last game of the year. And you guys know the game much more than I do, but I, don't you think it would be nice to have a little bit of guys playing with each other, especially with new guys for yeah. you know the last 10 games or eight games of the season? Chemistry is big, and especially like your habits. Like Edmondson settling into new systems, new players, all of that type of stuff. Did, I saw that him and Riley didn't skate. Are they? They're Edmondson is out? out and probably won't play all week. Riley's a game time decision. He could still play. Tonight. I didn't see. And it did is there Edmondson? Edmondson? They just said they're being very coy about it. They're just he basically said it. don't expect him this week. But something popped up. It's a minor injury. I don't expect it to be anything more than a couple of games. But I do also wonder if they're juggling like Giordano's coming back off long term IR at some point. They're gonna have nine guys mm-hmm. and. They need to, like, I think we all know Riley's plan. I think Labushkin's plan, Edmondson's plan, McCabe's plan. Like, those four are going to play in the playoffs. And then it's Brody, Lilligren, Benoit. Timmons. The, Timmons, I don't see in the yeah. playoffs. And I, I don't think Benoit's Giordano's playing with in the playoffs. Tonight, somewhere yeah. The way. yeah just, but they got to figure out their comment. I mean, Lilligren might have the inside track. He's put a lot better recently. That's, kind of, what, that's kind of ideal, though. You're looking for that competition where it's like, I got to go in there and play big boy hockey or I'm not going to stay in the lineup. See, right. I think Lilligren has the inside track to right-handed shot, but he also is more of a puck mover. Mm-hmm. You've got a lot of the same. Benoit, Edmondson, McCabe. Brody kinda. right now if he's in the lineup. Yeah, but I, I mean, I'm saying those three mm-hmm. are more just physical and, hey, Labushkin, off the, the glass type of thing. So yeah. you're throwing Labushkin. That's four guys who aren't, like, really, really efficient puck movers. Mm-hmm. And Lilligren, I thought Jamie's been pretty good the well, last that's couple That's what I'm saying. Really so yeah, Lilligren, I would better. argue if you did a ranking system, Morgan Riley's your one as far as puck mover, like a guy who can yeah. you know, advance the puck. Who would be two? I think it's Lilligren. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, it is. There's right? no question about TJ it. TJ Brody was five years ago. Like, right. But, um, but you're, you're looking at it because you still – you still need guys to get your skill forwards the puck. Right. Even join the rush, all that right. stuff. Like just, so that's what Have I'm saying. Have a different like, dynamic, different ingredient. Your, right. They've got a lot of kind of now they've got three or four guys are kind of the same player, just mm. different levels of physicality and skill. Well... Do you want to do your Norris five pack and have Duffy contribute? Like have some sort. Of- I heard that uh, you're doing some sort of uh, thing between the two of you, and uh, I was brought up as a potential unbiased sort of mediator decision maker, and like I was want- tossed aside yesterday. Well, not necessarily. No, I was tossed aside. You were tossed aside. I was dismissed pretty violently, actually. <laughs> But we're campaigning because we're not taken seriously. But why would you oh, toss me aside? I can't be bought unless you, it's you by McAlpine Ford. <laughs> 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 Do you vote on anything? Yeah. Um, I don't. You know, I did for a while, and I don't. I think I got as as much uh, stuck to the side as you. They don't. We've give been us... blackballed. Oh, yeah. and I. I think I'm with you on that. Yeah, c- we are looked upon as complete losers in scum. When I would it comes vote on the Con Smythe when I was at the Stanley Cup final, but yeah. I don't think I've got. That's only because for all you're the in the building. I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah LeBron like sitting next one. to me. Well, the he worst is I got a phone call saying, you know, you're in the media now. I think it'd be great to have you like voting on NHL awards, and I'm like, all in. I'd love to do it. Take it seriously. Never heard back. Yeah. Yeah. Very <laughs> I don't want to so, ride okay, out. The so, anyway, Norris. That, so, we're trying to campaign this so you're by putting our best foot forward. On yeah. So, a better list. we each have a five pack here. The thing is, is I got cut out mm-hmm. because he didn't like 
who I chose yesterday. Yeah, he right. chose my list yesterday. We did who the did Jack you have Adams. As coach? I know. I would listen. I had Talkit yesterday at one. I had uh, Jimmy I had Montgomery at two. Monty at two. I had Andrew Brunette. I think Harris Brunette. Brunette, oh, Brunette I had he my number. He had, Brunette should be Bruno very high. Three. You had uh, my guy Rod Brindamore. Rod Brindamore. Number Personal. Four. Actually, Rod sent me a note last night. Said thanks <laughs> and, for having my back. And at that five, is one guy I heard and from. And at five, he had Torts. <laughs> one guy I did hear from was Rod. Yeah. But other than that, I. Didn't hear much yeah. last night. Okay, so Norris candidates, right? All right, yeah. Do you want to do this quickly? Are yeah. you okay with that? I mean, I, I'm I, I fine. Don't, I don't I'm know. We can do it multiple times. They can too. both can weigh in on whose list they like better. All right, quickly. Let's go. You want to throw it up there? Do you want to go first? Throw Joe it up the there, bridge? Joe from the bridge. Throw my okay. list up oh, there. Take us through your, your five pack of, of Norris candidates got this year. Quinn Hughes at number one. Quinn I think Hughes. this guy, I talked about him having to be a stud, and yep. he's been that and more. Roman Yossi has rocketed up my list with his play recently, <laughs> and so have the Nashville Predators, Hazy yeah. B. Yes. Kale McCarr, you cannot disrespect this man. He no. still does Kale McCarr things every night. Noah Dobson, one of the bright spots for the New York it's Islanders. Unbelievable. This Quarterbacks year. to power play, assist guy, gets yeah. pucks to the net. And there's a guy that's been disrespected at the bottom there, Miro Heiskanen. Yeah. The Dallas Stars have been great, and he's been a massive part of it, and he deserves some love. That's why I threw him in there. That's Might not be a name that a lot of people recognize or have the star power. He's dynamite for Pete DeBoer. He's the unreal. Star. Yeah, he's a legit true number one on maybe the How best anything team in the could be better than that list right there is beyond me. Well, it's not going to be easy. That, that's a great list. Look at the two of them are going over their well, notes Duffy's right now. Well, looking up Duffy who the guys are. Noodles is trying to figure out how you <laughs> pronounce Heisken. <laughs> All right, so that, that's a great good, five it pack. It is a good list. A good great list. five pack. Now, good we'll list. get to mine. There's no difference at the top of mine, so I'm not going to waste any time. I have Hughes at one, Yossi at two, Makara at three. The three of them have been phenomenal yep. this year. I agree. I, I decided to go to the well with some of the elder statesmen on teams that are barely in but really relying on their guys yep. who are superstars, former stars, Number two over uh, overall picks, Norris winners. I have Victor Hedman at four, Drew Doughty at five. Hedman's numbers have been phenomenal this year. That defense core has taken beatings over the years in terms of losing players. Defensively, he's not as strong and as tough as he used to be. But offensively, this guy's putting up massive, massive numbers. He plays a ton of minutes. And naturally, I have Doughty at five because Doughty plays more minutes than anybody else in the league. Anybody yeah. else in the league, Drew Doughty, I think that deserves a ton of love. His numbers have been great. His underlying numbers, which are very important, very important. Oh, really? You're going to go down that alleyway? Also moving yeah. in the right direction. I think he took the coaching change in stride. He's a true leader. L.A. looks great. I have Drew Doughty at five. That's a list that personally I don't believe can be beat, yeah. but maybe it can be bought. I, you guys go ahead and take the floor. Well, do you want me to go first? Yeah, go ahead. Whatever. I, I, the, the lists, they mirror each other top three. Right? And then great, top three. Like, top great, three, top three. Great top three. Fantastic. But where it differs yeah. is where I end up leaning. So I'm going to lean towards Brian Hayes. Oh, my God. Because Drew Doughty wow. is having a resurgence. Yes, he is. In L.A. Thank you, Noodles. Drew Doughty is playing the most amount of minutes in the National Hockey League for a defenseman. Yep. This Nobody guy's else. won. This guy has done everything. And, it, you know, a lot of times it's a 10.30 start out here out east. People don't get to well, watch Well, I stay up late and watch him. See? I know it's difficult for others to do that. But I that's where I'm going right now. I'm going to go with the old, the old analyst. I stay up and watch the West Coast games. You guys don't. <laughs> uh, I think, again, both incredibly worthy lists. Mm -hmm. It feels difficult. It feels like the, one of those figure skating situations where both pairs could be on top of the podium this mm -hmm. year after a controversial judging ruling. But I think... As much as you back it up with stats, it's it's lazy to go with the perennial Hedman Dowdy type guys, and to bring in a guy like Noah Dobson, mm. I think takes more guts, and that's why I'm going with the O Dog wow. by a small margin. Wow! See, that's class. we got a split vote, man. We got the state <laughs> of know, Florida. Two thousand. I have that. enough faith. Doogie, Doogie, you can be the tiebreaker. Who's is better? And just be honest. Oh, I like your list. Wow. I really do. That's a definitive It's a voice. W for day two. All it's right. a W. We're all square. <laughs> all right. Fine. We're even, man. I can't deny that. I, I really like the Dobson. I thought long and hard on Dobson. Heiskin it's one of those pick. things where you thought Morris about it, and good. then when you saw him up on that board, you're like, looks that good. looks damn good. You have a dangerous. good list. You know what? Really I should good. have rethought it, but you've a you got a hell of a list. Yep. Both lists were great. Great because those The top three are really, like, those Everyone three, knows they're those interchanged. Three. But yeah. it's four and five where you had to be creative, and... You know, Dowdy, I, I liked, but you're right. 
Miro Haskinen doesn't get enough love either. He's been really Noah good. Dobson is a guy that's going to be a perennial. Heart problem. day is going to I might come in on an off day for that. That's sure. going to be a scintillating segment. That's going to be a battle. Huge you argument. can call in and vote. That's going to be a battle. Call in and vote. Yeah. No, I'll, I'll be golfing. <laughs> you probably will be. I'll be at the Dragon's Lair. What's yeah. it, what do I say it's called? <laughs> Dra- you don't Dragon's even know the Dragon's Fire. Fire. Yeah. Shout out to whoever they are. Yeah. Uh, all right, J.D. Good stuff, man. All right, guys. Have you guys a doing the quiz tonight? Are we, uh, what are we doing with the belt now? Are we? You know, I'm so damn sick of the of the belt. The belt's still. So I'm just I'm literally going to yeah. throw it across the desk, and whoever grabs it can have it. All right, I like that idea. <laughs> I might. It might just sit there for the rest of the yeah, year and just acknowledge it. it. Or maybe right. just retire you as the champion. You went through a lot of hard months. That's so fair. That's 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 good. fair. All right. Thank good you. Good stuff. All right, there he is, James Duthie, joining us here in studio. Mike Johnson coming up, calling a game tonight. Confirm it tonight later in the afternoon. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Johnny coming up. Confirm it tonight later in the afternoon. We'll grill Johnny on the uh, back end of his Norris ballot. I'm sure he's got a Norris vote. He'll, he'll throw something at you that you didn't even know existed. Oh, yeah. We're he'll have something somebody. sneaky there, in there. We're always going to – you're going to miss somebody. Well, there was – there's – Fox has been good like he is every yeah. year. Morris, he's been good. Like Taves has been good. I don't yeah. think he's top five. But um, Bouchard's been great in Edmonton, but defensively I just well, can't the get thing. there. Yeah, but his numbers offensively are off the ridiculous. charts. Ridiculous. ridiculous, Off the charts. But you're, you're right. There's always something you can point to and go, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Yeah. Are we missing anybody in like Florida or in one of these top-tier teams? You know, McAvoy. I was just going to say Boston. McAvoy. 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 That injuries in the suspension, though, that have yeah. kind of taken him out a little bit this year. But McAvoy, like if you're building a team right now, and you, it, let's say you're o- only a defenseman draft, McAvoy's going to the top five. Yeah, he's a... He's he, a might, he might be, He might go number one. No, he's, he's not going ahead of McCarr. Uh, like, McCarr's number one. Yeah. Like that right. guy, if you're building a team right now in defense, McCarr is one. I'd listen to an argument over McAvoy over... Quinn Hughes, though, as much as I love yeah. Hughes, McAvoy's got a different element to Just his game. He's got he bite, does. a little like, bit toughness, the penalty, like everything. Yeah. He does it all. But yeah. Hughes is special too. That's, like, that's I'm, I'm not thing. saying They're I would all... definitively do that. I probably would take Hughes, but McAvoy's close enough where I could listen to that argument. Yeah, and then it's Fox. Well, Yossi, like the, Yossi's, Yossi's a little bit older, but he's still rocking. God, that guy. Like, just, he's still rocking, man. Seems like he leads his team in scoring every, every year. single year. Like, yeah. is he a Hall of Famer? He might be. We'll come I, back and get into that. Yeah. Mike Johnson coming up. Leafs Devils tonight. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app.